Tune in to the Real Estate Roundup with the River Counties Association of Realtors. Join us every last Thursday of the month at 12 p.m. on Fiesta 99.1 and every last Friday of the month at 12 p.m. on The Buzz 101.3 as we explore the latest in local real estate. Whether you're buying, selling, or just love real estate, don't miss our expert advice and exclusive insights. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's explore the dynamic world of real estate in our vibrant River Counties community. Catch Real Estate Roundup and make your property dreams a reality. Good morning. Welcome to the River Counties Real Estate Roundup. Uh, My name is Michael Parent, CEO of River Counties Association of Realtors. Uh, Today, our guest is Lauren Tigard of Epic Realty. Lauren, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. This this is going to be exciting. So um, let's get right into it and um, let our audience members here know a little bit about yourself. Uh, What got you into this business? Oh, that's a loaded question. (laughs) Let's see. So to start with, I'm from South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, small town, not too far away from here. And I grew up with just a family of entrepreneurs. So I think from an early age, that was probably like a little seed that got dropped in. I also grew up watching Bob Vila home show. Yeah. (laughs) So like just little aspects of real estate have always, you know, been there. I've watched my grandmother remodel her house. 17,000 times <laughs> all herself. Um, so that kind of started it and just having like a sales minded spirit, I think. Um, I went to school at the University of Tennessee. I, okay. My degree's in criminal justice, so not necessarily well. <laughs> translates there. Um, but after college, I went to work for Vanderbilt Mortgage uh, and Finance in okay. Maryville. They're the in home finance mortgage lender for Clayton Homes. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, I did the back end of things. I did uh, foreclosures and bankruptcies and collections. Um, I loved my job, but it really opened my eyes to like the real world, you know? And then it was like, geez, I I wish I could do something to help people not ever be in this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So my husband's a football coach and that, you know, we, we started moving around a lot. So I was thrown a few curveballs here and there and once we finally got to a place where we thought okay we're settled we're here we're going to be here for a while right. and yeah. I can make an investment into myself that's when I was like okay let's do it I you know I always wanted to do re- to do real estate but it's a little hard to do when you're moving around moving every around. two or three years yeah. so that's kind of what got me here and <laughs> I'm excited to finally you know be doing it that's great and yeah seeing the the back side of this um, with the foreclosures and, and all that um, you know you see the unfortunate side that people go through yeah and, yeah it's not a, not an easy road it's devastating yeah it is and you know it's not always due to their own fault either just economic issues uh, yeah create that yeah know, this so. was uh, I started doing that in um gosh, tell myself how old I am here. But in 2011, I think is when I started working for them. And so it was still, you know, after the housing crisis sure. and there was there was a lot of foreclosures. So, you know, taking that now, I always think about that, especially if I'm working with a first time home buyer or somebody who's just not as established. You know, they may come prancing in with their pre-approval letter, but my first question is, can you really afford that? In, right. in a normal day-to-day life like have you sat down and done your own budget because the bank just looks at a pretty generic version of what your what you know your true financial state is what do you think you can really comfortably afford because i don't ever want to put someone in a home for that to end you know be their ending no and it's a great way to look at it too because you're right Uh, what you're pre-approved for doesn't always necessarily mean to go to that limit either you you want to be comfortable because there will be those emergencies or rainy days or or what have you yeah you want to make sure hundred percent a little cushion there you yes a hundred percent not all house poor you know? yes and, yeah I mean home ownership is great but you got to be able to you know breathe yes I uh, had Dave Ramsey crammed into me growing right? up through my dad <laughs> which now that I'm adult I don't I don't entirely agree with Dave on a lot but you know I those are things that I think really impact how I just run my business and sure you know for me it's about helping people obviously I want to make a paycheck but I want to make sure that I'm not harming someone in the process. Nope, that's a great that's a great mindset to have. And so, what do you feel? What else sets you apart from you know? Obviously, the realtor business. You know, there's a number of realtors and you know buyers and sellers um, that are listening here. You know, what can you offer them that will help them understand what sets you apart from everybody else? As well? Yeah. Well, you know, I think 
I think we're all going to do the same things in terms of, hey, we're going to put a sign in your yard or, hey, sure. we're going to walk you through the process. But I think where I'm different is I really try to develop a true friendship, you know, as much as I can with my clients so that I can really get a full picture of what their need is or, or their wants and, you sure. know, what, what their situation is that's causing them to buy or sell. Um, outside of that, um, you know, I'm heavy on social media. That's what I did for a decade before finally making the jump to this as I was a social media coordinator and a, and a development um, development coordinator for a sports league. And um, okay. so I'm, I'm all things social media. And I think that sets me apart just that I know how to work it. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I'm truly trained on. So, you know, I try to be hip with the kids. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, uh, but those things really make a difference in today's sure. world, especially if you're working with the, the younger clientele. You know, that's mm -hmm. where they're finding a realtor. That's where they're finding a house. Right, um, right. So I'm heavy on marketing, you okay. know, and I'm heavy on photos, videos, drone videos, you know, anything I can do to market somebody's property or vice versa. I'm heavy on, you know, just networking. I, I try to be everywhere all the time and know everybody. <laughs> and I'm always calling, you know, my fellow realtors, do you know of anything, you know, that's X, Y, or Z for buyers and trying to find sure. something off market. I'm, I'm I love a good off market deal because sure. I don't have sure. competition. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, I try to be super innovative in everything that I do. And I try to be one step ahead of everybody else sure and and the social media platform obviously our our world now for everything lives within the online world yes. you know and um you know obviously the days of print and all that are not you know as relevant yeah, anymore, you don't see the uh, the flip books anymore at you know right. western sizzling with all the houses that are for sale yep. <laughs> yeah because you can hit a button and it's out there a lot quicker than the print you yes know, that, that takes yes. a few weeks to get uh, yes. published in that so so if I'm a seller, let's talk about the seller side first, and then we'll talk about the buyer side. So I'm a seller. I call you up, say, hey, Laura, you know, I'm thinking about selling my house. What, what's your steps? What's your process? What do you do with a seller um, that's ready to go to the market? It kind of depends on how ready they really are to sell. I try to figure okay. out, you know, what, what's your timeline and why are you selling? What's the motivation here? If it's just somebody who's, frankly, looking to sell because they feel like they can cash in on this nice market. Sure those can sometimes be a little harder to work with because they right. think their house is worth a little more than what more it than is. What you can, uh, you know? <laughs> so first and foremost, I want to get to that house. I want to see it. I want to go in it. I want to, you know, what are, what are we dealing with here? Um, I always run a, and I'll do this for anybody, a um, home equity report that just kind of is a computer generated valuation of here's what I think your house is worth and here's the tax record and make sure everything on that end is correct okay. so that we can get something fixed if it's wrong before we go on market. Um, I'm pretty blunt with people about, hey, you know, <laughs> if you've got 75 colors in your house, let's hit this with a paint roller. You know, yeah. let's let's really maximize what we can do to get you the most, the most money. So I like to go and look at it. Um, give them my process i have a whole seller's package you know that just okay. goes through everything if, if does it doesn't need staging uh do we have virtual staging epic realty now offers me the ability to do virtual staging for free which is amazing cause typically it's like a hundred dollars for four photos sure. um so you know and we also have the ability now or i have the ability through epic to do kind of reverse virtual staging so if you have a room that you're using for storage okay once i get my photos back i can actually go in and clean it so instead of staging a, a bedroom furniture in there i can just kind of take all that storage out so it allows a potential buyer to visualize what they would do with that space okay. um, instead of seeing clutter sure um and then you know past that we do photos depending on commissions are always negotiable yes, depending <laughs> on I have just a structure you know do you want my full service package which is staging potential virtual staging potential virtual cleaning drone photos video photos like you know really in-depth uh, video footage that I come in and shoot and you know paid ads across all platforms on social media plus Google and Zillow and everything else um, or, you know, if, you've, if you have a beautiful home and it needs no staging, maybe we'll take it down a notch. So I sure. have something that fits everybody's needs. If you, you know, are in a tough financial situation and you're just needing to get it sold, mm -hmm. 
I have that package too. You okay. know, just it's mostly basic photos, but none. No matter what level I'm doing, I'm always going to pay for ads myself. I'm always going to, you know, have my nice pretty sign in your yard sure. with a QR code. I'm always going to send out mass emails to my database, the realtor database. Um, I'm always going to hustle for you. <laughs> no, that's great. So instead of it being one size fits all, obviously, because this business is not that. You know, everybody does have different needs and yeah time frames and you know what expertise they're going to need from a realtor absolutely okay and um so with staging um just to clarify for that for everybody in our, our audience which they probably mostly understand it but that's give it a little definition of staging what you mean by that so staging that. can be if it's a vacant home um sometimes buyers have a hard time walking in and just seeing walls well Empty where rooms. you know yeah, yeah where would i put a couch in here where what wall does the the bed go on sure. so staging i partner with emily wattenbarger who is also with epic realty uh, she has a staging company and she just comes in she's fantastic and you know sets up the living room and the kitchen and you know you can really just envisualize what you would do right with that space and especially if it's an awkward floor plan or an awkward room you know sure. that's really hard for some people if they don't have that mindset to know sure. what would i do here right. if it's not already there um it also is proven to and i don't have the percentage you may know yeah. that it's what like 20 times more likely to get a higher sales yeah. price if it's staged versus if it's yeah. vacant so it makes a huge difference yeah because it is hard to visualize sometimes when you walk in um where am I going to put all my stuff, like you said? You know, and especially yeah. if, if a room, as you mentioned, has different angles and stuff. Sometimes it gets a little complicated. Um, and I've always believed in that, too, as far as, you know, you're staging that property for the masses, you know. Yes. So anybody with their lifestyle can see, I can do this or I can do that. Yeah, room, yeah. So. It's very neutral. You know, yeah. you don't want anything loud. Something that, you know, they can say, oh, I, that's okay. You right. know, but <laughs> it gives them the idea. That's so. great. That, that's terrific. So that sounds great. So. The other side of it now, so I'm a buyer. Um, mortgage rates obviously are starting to come down a little bit, which is great news. <laughs> it's so been glad. a while. Um, feels like it's been forever, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Getting there. Two weeks ago, I was like, "Oh man, yeah, buckle up." Yeah. So if I'm a buyer, I reach out to you. What What are we going to go through? What's our What's your process handling with buyers? Well, with the new changes, I've kind of changed it up a little bit. So if you have the ability to meet before we go to any kind of house mm -hmm. at a coffee shop or for lunch or whatever i would love to meet and just why do you want to buy you know are you moving into cleveland why what are your needs do you need to be in a specific school zone do you need to sure. be close to you know the interstate or whatever it may be um if you can't then well, i try to capture all that you know on the phone and convince you to work with me um <laughs> But what I do for buyers is is similar to what I do for sellers. I'm going to hustle. Again, that's where the off-market deals really come from for me is I try to network as well as I can to know, is there something coming? Do you have anything in your back pocket? Like, right. what's going on so that I can get an upper hand? I do think with rates dropping, we're going to start inching back to you know lower days on market sure. I, I just pulled the numbers it was 31 days in july was the average days on market okay. um i'm really curious to see what august numbers will be because right. i think with that big dip two weeks ago right i, I know with my own listings i started seeing more and more showings yeah. um so you know just having the ability to network and know what's going on and and know what fits for you i don't want to just Oh, okay, great. You're looking for a three bedroom, two bath. Plug right. it in. You get the automated emails. Right. Well, yeah, anybody can do, anybody that. Can do that. And yeah. anybody can search for that on Zillow. You know, I want to really know what do you want right. so that I really can go and search and find the best property for you, you know, wherever that may be. And, you know, um, with working with buyers, uh, and I think that's a great point because everybody has an idea of what they want but then what is actually going to come obviously is different you know mm -hmm. and, uh, you know i would assume that probably then great communication from your buyer is going to help you be able to find that right property that they're looking for yeah and i really try to set expectations you know it's it's unrealistic for someone to call and say i would love to have five bedrooms three baths right. on 10 acres here in cleveland but you know my yeah. budget's 300 grand well I'm pretty blunt. Not gonna That's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, you right. know, so I really try to set expectations up front of, hey, I know you want this. Right. 
we might need to look at this, right. you know, and then right. also figuring out what's their finances look like. Sure. You know, I'm really big on, do you have a pre-approval? Yes. And if you don't, I'm probably going to take a little bit of a step back mm -hmm. just because my time is important and your time is important. Right. I don't want to go take you to a home. You fall in love with it and you can't afford it. Yeah. Um, and I also don't want to, you know, waste my time and go to five different houses only to find out you can't be pre-approved for anything. Right. Um, right. And I would love to know your financial situation so that I can help. I mean, you know, I work with several local lenders here who are fantastic, who all have resources for like credit repair and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to just give up on you if you can't afford it. I want to help you. Like, how can we fix, you know, whatever problems there may be to get you into a home in six months or a year or 18 months, whatever it may right. take. Yeah, because credit um, obviously is, is going to be the number, <coughs> excuse me, the driving factor of what they're going to qualify for in their mortgage. Yeah. And the type of loan they're going to get. Exactly. VA, FHA, conventional, um, different options out there. Yes. You know, so, yeah. So I think that's some great advice to, to have buyers get pre approved before you start that showing process because it's easy to go look at the homes. I mean, yes. right? That's probably the simplest part of our job. Um, you know, then getting in the contract is more complicated and everything else, but opening a door to find a home, that's not hard but knowing that you're going to be able to afford that home you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, and I get it. Like, looking at houses is fun, you right. know, and that's yes. cool. And and right. I have sometimes, you know, I have a couple clients who are, they're on the fence of, do I want to sell my house or sure. not? And so, but they're honest with me. We don't know. Can we see a couple things just to give us an idea? Yeah, of course. I don't right. mind to do that. I just don't want to make it a habit of seeing houses when you really don't know if you could get you a loan know. or not. Yep. So let's step out of that for a little bit right now, um, and we'll get back to the market here in a second. But Tell us about the community involvement. Um, you know, you mentioned you're you're in a lot of places. You know, you really try to get yourself out there. So, what what do you do within the communities that are within our range here that we're having our audience listen to? Yeah, well, so my husband is the head football coach at Cleveland, so I feel like I live breathe eat work play at cleveland sure, sure. <laughs> uh, i have become the uh, unofficial nutrition coordinator for the football team okay. so uh, we're providing them food every single day but it's been a great opportunity for for me to be at the high school and get to know the kids and get to know the teachers and the principals and you know i i don't know why i don't have a name badge yet uh, right. bob pritchard <laughs> can we put me on staff please um yeah. But so I'm super just involved in the youth community. I'm on the board of the Cleveland Youth Football League. So we have flag football, tackle football, and cheerleading for, well, I think our son, Barrett, who's four, is the youngest currently. Right. <laughs> I think there's a couple four-year-olds. And then we go all the way up to like sixth grade. Okay. Um, so I'm just heavily involved in the youth. I also speak at Cleveland High School, uh, their personal finance class each semester and do about a two day long class, uh, deep dive with just personal finance. We talk about, you know, insurance. I sold insurance for a brief amount of time okay. when I was in Missouri uh, for AAA, but we talk about, you know, what's the real world look like when you leave Cleveland High School or Bradley sure. County High School or Walker Valley, you know, that's that's a whole other thing. Do you know how to write a check? Do you know how credit cards work? Sure. Do you know how interest works? Yeah. Uh, we dive into real estate a little bit. Um, I'm currently trying to set up a junior achievement. Uh, they do not have a program at Cleveland High School, so we're trying to get that nice. on the books. Uh, mm -hmm. Nate Tucker has been great in helping get that going. Um, so I'm hoping to be there and possibly Okoy Middle. I don't know, I still have to nail that down. Yeah. Um, now that my youngest is finally in school, I'm joining the Rotary Club. So I've been lucky that I, <laughs> I get asked a lot to be like, you know, guests with, I have so many friends that are in Rotary and I'm like, I wanna join. I just I gotta kick my little one out of the nest sure. first. <laughs> um, so doing that, um, chamber events, um, just I'm just trying to be out and about. I try to go to brokers open. Again, you know, knowing the market, knowing sure. what's available, and just knowing people. Um, I try to collaborate with as many uh, title companies in town as I can, you know, local lenders. I'm really big on local. Give, give sure. me a local yep. lender all day long. <laughs> um, so just trying to network as best as I can. No, and I think that's a great idea is, um, you know, when our high schoolers get out of high school or they get first year in college, you get inundated with all the credit card mm -hmm. solicitations and you think, great, and I'm going to go spend this money. Well, you got to pay it at some point. Yeah, you know? at 27% so, interest. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. It, I think that's a great idea because um, to start it young and early to get them the education. Because yeah. 
there is really no courses in a lot of high schools that really teach you that. I mean, you know, you touch on it, but I think that's a great idea. Uh, yeah, it's, like it's been really, it's it's been rewarding, honestly, because, uh, you know, they're that's our future, sure. you know, and making sure that they're making good decisions from the get-go. Yeah, that's, so. that's a terrific idea. So yeah. So give you... Kudos for that. Thanks. I idea. enjoy it. I don't think I have an option because it's, a, it's <laughs> right? a fellow football coach that teaches the class, yeah. but I, I still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> what about um, hobbies, interests that you, your family are into? What do you guys like to do when you're not out looking for houses and helping sellers sell their house? Well, football, football, football. football yep. <laughs> uh, when, it, when we can get away from the football field, I love being outside. We love to be out on the water, swimming or on the boat. Uh, yeah. jet ski skiing i still ski i don't think anybody skis anymore right. that really shows your age i also snow ski which also shows my age everybody wakeboards surfs or snowboard so right. i still do all the old school yeah. stuff and try to do the new school stuff and not break my neck um love to be outside what like i said mountains snow mountains in the winter nice. the the water in the summer i like to read if i have time uh, I'm trying to make like a concerted effort to pick up my reading again. <laughs> and um, honestly, just sports, like in general, my kids play soccer, baseball, football. Yeah. So we're all things sports related, usually Activity, swimming. Outdoors, yeah. 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 yeah it, um, like you said, with skiing, yeah, it's, it's a little bit changed, right? Over yeah, the last nobody number of years. does it. It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. I've so, not got on a snowboard, nor do I want to. Um, I'll I, stick with skis. My <laughs> husband does it, and I, it's amazing that he can – he's older than I am, so <laughs> I, I'm shocked. But, like, our our 8-year-old just jumped right up on a snowboard wow, um, yeah. last year and, you know, like, was going so fast that we couldn't keep up with him. And yeah. I'm on skis, like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> they have no doing? fear. <laughs> no, zero. Zero. Yeah. It, it's, it is amazing what kids can do nowadays just – it's so right funny it's so yeah. funny and you know we'll go out like on the water we go up to center hill lake a lot yeah. and um my dad will occasionally get out the skis and he and i will ski or uh, you know anybody and people will just look at you like <laughs> what are they doing because i mean especially center hill it's like the wakeboard mecca you know it's oh, yeah. just surfboard and wakeboarding and right. they just look at you like what are those <laughs> like it's water skis does no one do this anymore yeah. yep yeah it uh it it's interesting how things evolve and, and change yeah. really, rather quick sometimes, your age. too. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does. And we won't talk about my age either. So, <laughs> so we've got a few minutes left. Um, tell our audience some market conditions, what's going on right now, and maybe some good tips for them, you know, on both sides of the business. Uh, as yeah. We wrap this up. So, I, you know, July numbers are out. Obviously, August, we're still in it, so we don't have those. I was sure. looking at it this morning, and I thought it was in, uh, interesting. And I, like I said earlier, I'm... I'm really curious to see the August numbers because mm -hmm. I do feel like this last half of August is going to dramatically swing, swing the numbers. Yeah. Um, I know on one of my listings, we were offering a 2-1 buy down through Bank of Cleveland, mm -hmm. and we pulled it for the, for the sake of the flyer. We pulled the numbers three days before rates just dropped Drop. but even at that it was a 4.99 percent rate that they could wow. that they could get on that first year and so i called rob highland he's who i'm partnering <laughs> with on like tuesday after rates dropped and i was like dude what would it be now and he's like i mean pretty good you know yeah. we're looking at maybe like 4.75 percent for the first year and i'm like wow you know those are numbers that we've not heard or seen sure. in probably, what two years i guess so um anyways i thought that was interesting because the days on market was 31 in july which was up 10 percent from june and I, I know i personally felt that july was yeah it just seemed weird it seemed a little a little slower the the deals were still there but they were just slower to be to be made um but the list to sales price was um up about half a percentage so i mean 97.6 percent so if you list your house for you know three hundred thousand dollars you're you're probably going to get that or very yeah, very close very to close, it yeah. so i think that's kudos to all the realtors in bradley county i think we're all doing our job well and right. reading the market and adjusting it uh the average sales price was down nine percent from june it was three hundred thousand still okay. not shabby 
right? Yeah. Um, and I think the the average list price was three hundred and twenty five thousand. Okay. So I mean, not a huge, you know, not a huge gap. And obviously, yeah. more people are getting it with it being ninety seven percent there. So I mean, overall, it's still a seller's market. It was moving closer to a balanced right. market. Right. I think when these numbers for <laughs> August come out, we're going to see it bouncing a little bit back right. towards towards the sellers because, um, you know, buyers are going to start coming out now. So yeah. we and we only had a little over two months worth of, of inventory. So it just continues to be yeah. low. And, you know, that that's the thing. Um, yeah, but the interest rates that, that we're at now, we're probably in what the six range. Um, I think so. I think they're like the low yeah. sixes. Yeah. And, um, you know, as a buyer, I think what a lot of buyers don't understand at times, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but they get focused on that interest rate, but you can always refinance it, you know? It's so cringe, yeah. and I think some people hate it, And but it's true when they say date the rate and marry the house. Right. If you can afford it, and again, it all goes back to my earlier point, affordability and making sure you, you really can't afford to buy groceries and gas and car and everything. If the numbers still work out for you right now, Yeah buy the house right the rates are going to fall i don't know i don't know and you may disagree i don't think we're ever going to really go back to twos and threes i don't i don't know how sustainable that is right yeah it's not yeah it's, so you know and historically six is good people yes. don't want to admit that but historically six percent interest rate is is really good right. i do think we'll see the fives and you know you could even touch into the fours especially with a buy down program sure. or something like that but um i think if you can afford it right now and you love the house, I think you should get it. Sure. Um, because like, you know, you can, you can refinance yeah. at and, any time. And 6%, you know, I've always used the, the numbers to help a buyer understand is $6 for every thousand dollars on your mortgage. You know, it's, it's yeah. one of the easiest rates to kind of put it in perspective, you know? Yeah. So when you're that $5,000 apart with a seller, you're really talking $30 more a month that mm -hmm. you're gonna be spending. Not a big, big amount, you know, you're not yeah. spending that amount of money right up front. It's based out over all your years yeah so. and i just try to keep stressing too like also we are we did see a little bit of a decline in you know the median sales price three hundred thousand. Sure. which is that's great however when these rates keep coming down it's supply and demand then the housing yep. prices are going to come up. back up yep. you can renegotiate your interest rate every day of the week you can never renegotiate once you're closed your sales price right so you, you know <laughs> lock in that lock in that lower yep. sales price today and then lock in a lower interest rate in three months six months yeah. or a year and refinance as many times as you want you yeah know, and, and that you're qualified for yeah so, absolutely well in our last minute here lauren um obviously we want people to know where to reach you um so share with them uh what's the best way to get in contact with you yeah so just lauren tigard uh my cell phone number is four two three four eight eight five six three two uh, you can shop for any homes on the market all over the United States at Lauren Tigard.com it's okay. l-a-u-r-e-n t-y-g-a-r-d the go. last name always hangs people up yep. um, and then I, you can find me anywhere on social media Lauren Tigard Realtor Okay. on on pretty much all platforms oh, that's awesome. just don't judge me for what you see on there i'm, I'm trying to stay hip with the kids <laughs> i i get it you're, you're, you got it going on so it's, it's great you, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do yeah you gotta, exactly and um no we appreciate you being here today um it, it's been terrific to get to know you and i hope our audience you know has gotten a little bit more insight as to what you can provide for thanks them. it's been a good time yeah, we wish you the best of luck and Thank finish you. this half of the second year here strong and uh hopefully yeah. we keep moving things forward i so. hope so i'm excited i think it's going to be a good end of the year there you go all right thanks lauren thank you all right, thanks bye-bye do you imagine a career with flexibility and limitless income potential it's possible by becoming a realtor the river county's association of realtors located right here in cleveland tennessee is ready to help you unlock your potential we're your go-to resource for guiding you to obtain your tennessee real estate license we're more than just realtors we're a vital part of our community partnering with local charities we work tirelessly to make a difference Join the River Counties Association of Realtors today where your career can thrive and community can too. Visit rivercounties.com or call 423-476-5912. Your new path awaits.